built to serve. Welcome back. So we're talking a little Cam Newton and his football future, or, well, right now, the lack thereof. The soon-to-be 31-year-old still searching for a starting role in the NFL, and his former teammate Greg Olson is perplexed by it, said Cam is, quote, too good of a player not to be signed right now. So, Nick, besides the funny hats, besides the flamboyant pants, why do you think teams are passing on Cam? Well, Jenna, the funny hats and the flamboyant pants at this point have to be part of it. I know you were joking, but I, I, that is, at this point, we're out of viable options as to why Cam Newton remains unemployed. We have to acknowledge this cannot just be about football. Not in a world where people say, uh, Cam's not consistent enough. You know who was very consistent for six solid years? Joe Flacco. He was consistently awful for six years in a row after the Super Bowl. And you know what that got him? A uh, big, uh, uh, they, he was traded for in Denver with millions and millions and millions of dollars left on his deal. You know who was inconsistently healthy, or I guess consistently unhealthy? Sam Bradford. And that did not stop, who, hell, who traded for him? Minnesota, Arizona gave him one year, 20 million bucks. You know why? Because quarterback play at this league is at such a premium if you ever show any high-level ability. Hey, Nick Foles, you played six amazing quarters uh, in the last five years. How about we give you $80 million in Jacksonville? You stink there. How about Chicago trades for you? So this idea that it's Cam's health or consistency that is just keeping him out of the league right now doesn't hold water to me. And so you bring up the funny hats and the funny wardrobes, and it, it, I guess in the eye of the beholder, I, you know, I look at Philip Rivers, who seems to have some worse on the field body language than Cam, who wears damn bolo ties to press conferences, didn't hurt him <laughs> in getting $25 million from the Indianapolis Colts coming off a year where he was a turnover machine for the only team he's ever played for. So there seems to be a disconnect, and there always has been with Cam. Certain people see Cam and see a guy who's never been in trouble, has been amazing in the community, has won at the highest level at community college, regular college, damn near in the NFL when they went 15-1-1 league MVP, and is beloved by young fans. And some people see Cam and see a diva who wears funny hats, and we, and to quote our friend Eric Mangini, is more of a star than a starter. And I think there's a, there's a culture gap, and I think there's an expectation gap, Brian, that Cam deals with that is part of the reason so many other quarterbacks get third and fourth chances, and he seems to be struggling to get a second chance. You know, Nick, I absolutely agree with you there. I think there is a culture gap, and I think there is a, a gap between the perception of the people that are making the decisions of Cam's likelihood to play again in the NFL and what Cam is doing. To me, I only judge the player on the field, so I'm only going to address that because I think the outside the field things are maybe the part of the reason why he's not playing, but it should not be. And so I'm going to look at it on the field type of stuff. I'm going to look at Cam as a passer. I think he can be much more accurate. I think he has a rocket for an arm, but he has to play better in the pocket. Here's the biggest thing that I think when you talk about why Cam isn't employed right now. The biggest asset that Cam had as a player was his ability to make plays with his legs and his ability to make defenses come up so he can throw over the top of them. And when you look at Cam's legs, you have to be worried about all the injuries, the, sur the, the, the shoulder the ankle, you have to be concerned that he has 214 more carries um, since he came into the league than any other quarterback. That includes Russell Wilson. So when you think about that, that's just a lot of carries. That's a lot of touches for a quarterback that has been broken down these last couple of years. And I think teams, uh, uh, if you can get past the culture of the differences, if you can get past the outfit, I think they may be a little bit concerned with that and having them in the back of row to them probably isn't worth it, but I think that's a total mistake, and that's misguided judgment uh, as far as teams and evaluators. So, Nick, I'm going to throw the ball to you here. I've been watching all of Cam's uh, Instagrams. He just released a new video on YouTube of him working out, and he looks great. We said Tua looked great off of a home video, and, and Cam looks even better. But I want to spin it forward into the season to see what could happen. 
Dan Patrick and Mike Florio had a conversation yesterday that I thought was fascinating. Dan asked Florio, what's the best case scenario for Cam? And Florio said a quarterback being injured and Cam comes in. And I said, oh, that's interesting. So we looked at, he mentioned three specific quarterbacks who got injured. One was Cam himself. Big Ben went down in week two and Drew Brees went down in week two. Now, if it, the scenario plays out like Big Ben, that Cam can come in and be the franchise quarterback for a little while, I think that makes sense. But what happens with like a Drew Brees situation? If a quarterback goes down, but is going to come back in week eight, and Cam comes in and is playing great, and now you look up and you've got a, a franchise QB, and you got Cam Newton on your team. I don't know if that works. I don't know how that would play out. What's your take on that? Yeah, I don't think Cam's going to be brought in by a team unless they are in desperate straits if they're talking about bringing him in during the flow of the season. I do think Cam Jenna is playing a bit of a dangerous game here because I think he's banking on either a guy like Gardner Minshew <laughs> just looking horrific in the preseason or there being a quarterback injury. But we don't know what the preseason's going to be. We don't know what training camp's going to be. Teams might come into this season healthier than ever because there might not be a real offseason. And so I understand why Cam's doing it. You'd rather it be available to all 32 teams than just the one team you sign with. I get that. But Jenna, and you were bringing this up before the show, it's a dangerous gambit that, I, that he is engaging in right now. The other aspect of this is that he's already made it clear he doesn't want to be a backup. He wants to be a starter. A lot of these teams already have their starters in place, so they take them out of the equation. But, Brian, I'll ask you, if there is a quarterback in this league that needs to get out on the field in any capacity, that needs the reps, that needs to test out that shoulder, test out that ankle, it's got to be Cam Newton. The guy hasn't played since week two last year. He's coming off surgery. He's got to learn a new team, a new offense. How hard would that be? For him to say, I'll wait till someone's injured, I'll hop in, they're going to want to get him up and running that week, if not the next week. It seems to me, and you're an athlete, you're a player, former player who knows this, that would be near impossible to ask a guy like Cam Newton to come right away, do that, and be successful. I, I absolutely agree, and I think that's going to be his biggest problem because teams are still questioning how healthy is Cam. Can he, can he be healthy when he gets here? Let's say he has to play in week six. Can he be healthy? Can he learn the offense quick enough? And I think they still have questions as far as his arm and not the strength. We know he has a strong arm. Can he be accurate enough to help us win football games? And to me, if I'm Cam Newton, and listen, and we have different perspectives. He was a number one overall pick. He was a great college player, all these different things. So I look at it a little bit different than Cam. But if I was Cam, I would get into Cam and go win me a job. If I had an opportunity to compete yeah. for the number one position, let's say with the Chargers and Tyrod Taylor, if I had an opportunity to compete for the number one position, that's what I would want. I would want to get into camp, prove that I'm healthy, and then learn the offense, and then go out there and show the coaches that I can win. It's going to be much harder for him to come in in week six or seven, try to learn the offense, prove that he's healthy, and then go out there and play in less than seven days. It's really, really hard to do that in the NFL. Don't you agree, Nick? Don't you see that being even harder for, for Cam Newton in the position he's in right now? Sure, but, there's, but we're saying he should take an option that hasn't been presented to him. Where is the team that has said come in and compete for the starting quarterback job? That, uh, Brian, like, it, it, well, we he can't made it say known. he, he should do what Jameis did. Right. So, the, uh, of course, the, Jameis is not competing for a starting quarterback job. He's the backup quarterback. Andy Dalton is not competing for a starting quarterback job. He's the backup quarterback. Brian is saying go to a team where you can compete. He can't just show up and say, fellas, I'm here. Like, somebody's got to want to bring him in. And the, maybe the Chargers <laughs> would have, maybe that would make sense. But they drafted Justin Herbert. So that's Herbert and Tyrod Taylor. The Patriots inexplicably haven't shown interest. And I, it, it, I know it's easier for people to say it's because he's injury prone or because he's inconsistent that he doesn't have a job. But then explain to me how Sam Bradford kept getting jobs. Explain to me how Case Keenum got $36 million 
after eight good games being an undrafted player. Explain to me how Nick Foles has had two separate teams in the last 13 months be like, you know what? Let's sign up for the Nick Foles experience. How Joe Flacco gets traded for by John Elway. All those guys, their level of inconsistency, exponentially greater than Cam, and their apex of play in this league, exponentially lower than Cam. There has to be something else here. Brian, go, I know we got to be quick, but go ahead, Brian. Yeah, but I just think that traditional quarterbacks, like all those guys that you just named, they're more traditional quarterbacks, and they're easier to come in in the secondary role because teams already know exactly what they're going to get out of those guys. There's a little bit of question around Cam. Do we have to change our offense to what he does well? Do we have to do more rollouts? Do we need to do more quarterback options, getting the ball in his hands? Do I have to change everything that we do 